I'm going to read a book, a story today that I always read. I've read every year to my students, my adult students learning how to be teachers just like me as a way of telling them how to read to students and how to use the books to learn about the world. Ferdinand is a bull and Ferdinand is being trained for the bull ring where he's got to defend himself against the matador. Takes place in in Mexico or Spain. They all they both at one time had bullfights. Fortunately, there aren't any bullfights anymore where bad things happen. But this is the story about Ferdinand the Bull by Munro Leaf. Once upon a time in Spain, there was a little bull and his name was Ferdinand. All the other little bulls he lived with would run and jump and butt their heads together. But not Ferdinand. He liked to just sit quietly and smell the flowers. He had a favorite spot out in the pasture under a cork tree. It was his favorite tree and he would sit in its shade all day and smell the flowers. Sometimes his mother, who was a cow, would worry about him. She was afraid he would be lonesome all by himself. Why don't you run and play with the other little bulls and skip and butt your head, she would say. But Ferdinand would shake his head. I like it better here where I can just sit quietly and smell the flowers. His mother saw that he was not lonesome, and because she was an understanding mother, even though she was a cow, she let him just sit there and be happy. As the years went by, Ferdinand grew and grew until he was very big and strong. All the other bulls who had grown up with him in the same pasture would fight each other all day. They would butt each other and stick each other with their horns. What they wanted most of all was to be picked to fight at the bullfights in Madrid. That's the capital of Spain. But not Ferdinand. He still liked to just sit quietly under the cork tree and smell the flowers.
One day, five men came in very funny hats to pick the biggest, the fattest, the roughest bull to fight in the bullfights in Madrid. All the other bulls ran around snorting and butting, leaping and jumping, so the men would think that they were very, very strong and fierce and pick them. Ferdinand knew that they wouldn't pick him, and he didn't care. So he went out to his favorite cork tree to sit down. He didn't, didn't look where he was sitting, and instead of sitting on the nice, cool grass in the shade, he sat on a bumblebee. Well, if you were a bumblebee and a bull sat on your what would sat on you, what would you do? You would sting him, and this is just what this bee did to Ferdinand. Wow, did it ever hurt. Ferdinand jumped up with a snort. He ran around puffing and snorting, butting and pawing the ground as if he, he were crazy. The five men saw him, and they all shouted with joy. Here was the largest and fiercest bull of all, just the one for the bullfights in Madrid. So they took him away for the bullfight day in a cart. What a day it was. Flags were flying, bands were playing, people were shouting with joy. And all the lovely ladies had flowers in their hair. You know what that means. They had a parade into the bull ring. First came the banderilleros with long sharp pins with ribbons on them to stick in the bowl and make him mad. Next came the picadores who rode skinny horses and they had long spears to stick in the bowl and make him madder. Then came the matador, the proudest of all. He thought he was very handsome and bowed to the ladies. He had red, he had a red cape and a sword and was supposed to stick the bull last of all. Then came the bull, and you know who that was, don't you?
They called him Ferdinand the Fierce, and all the Banderilleros were afraid of him, and the Picadores were afraid of him, and the Matador was scared stiff. Ferdinand ran to the middle of the ring and everyone shouted and clapped because they thought he was going to fight fiercely and butt and snort and stick his horns around. But not Ferdinand. When he got to the middle of the ring, he saw the flowers and all the lovely ladies there, and he just sat down and quietly smelled. He wouldn't fight and be fierce, no matter what they did. He just sat and smelled. And the Banderilleros were mad, and the Picadores were madder, and the Matador was so mad he cried because he couldn't show off with his cape and his sword. So they had to take Ferdinand home. And for all I know, he is sitting there still under his favorite cork tree, smelling the flowers just quietly. And he is very happy. The end. There's a lot there to think about and a lot there to learn about and learn from. I love this book, and even my 20-something-year-old students would love listening to the story. Thanks for listening.